to emphasize the ritualistic aspect of what we could see frozen in time and space, implying some force greater than itself. I asked Cocteau to compose a libretto for Oedipus. A libretto, I said, which must be a very banal libretto as a big public yes. to understand not really to see all the movements and to conclude you know mm-hmm. but very banal and uh, and he composed me a libretto which was Wagnerian but I said it's not banal that's Wagnerian and I did much more simple libretto, a libretto for everybody. Nobody understands Wagnerian librettos. Even Wagner, uh, he said, my dear, don't worry, I will do another one. And he did another one which was a little bit less Wagnerian. I said, this is still Wagnerian. And he said that, my dear, it's a pleasure to work with you. I will make a third libretto. It was very nice. And the third libretto, he did it just as Italian operas. That's what I need. Spectateur, vous allez entendre une version latine dédiée pour roi. Afin de vous épargner tout effort d'oreille. Cocteau further suggested that a narrator presumably himself, should introduce each scene, again to remove the action from the real world. We had intended the work as a birthday present for Gagnon to celebrate 20 years of Le Ballet Russe. The second half of a program in Paris, which also included the fur bird, starring Balanchine and Serge Lefar. It was very obvious that the audience, the average audience, was coming not for an oratorio, but for ballet, for things like Sherazade, the Prince Igor, or the Firebird. Uh, they would accept the more avant-garde ballet, but a ballet. But an oratorio, all of a sudden, uh, with, uh, and absolutely stiff and still, like Oedipus should be, with no motion as you have in an opera, was something they didn't, uh, mm, they were not prepared for. That, hence, no success whatsoever, and uh, there, was, there was a big chill in the audience. <laughs> 